what a great day it is to worship our great God. Amen? Amen. Every time I hear that song, I kind of want to do a Celtic dance or something, you know, just get, a, get the juices going. But what a great song. What a great way to begin worship. Thank you, Spirit of Grace. And uh, we just welcome you all here today. For those of you who may be visiting, we welcome you in. My name is Dave Van Netten, and I have the privilege of worshiping our great God. And uh, so once the music, there we go. Thank you so very much for the competition this morning. So uh, we welcome you here today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for being a part of this time. Thank you, God, for Grace Church. Thank you for the beauty of this little facility, for the beauty of this sanctuary. Thank you for the beauty of your people. Thank you for the beauty of Jesus Christ and that empty cross up there before us. Oh Lord, what a symbol of strength and life it is for us. What a symbol of hope and encouragement each and every day. Oh Lord, how we need it and how we need you today. And so we invite you to come before us, God. Come and meet us in this place and touch us anew and again. Refresh us and revive us, Lord. Forgive us and cleanse us. Make us right with you today. This we ask and this we pray in the strong name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take a moment, greet those around you today. If there's somebody here you don't know their name, be sure to find out. Let us greet each other in the name of Jesus. <laughs>
before you, and it is our firm and square desire, Lord, that our praises would be heard and be heard first and foremost by you, Lord. That you would receive today our most deepest worship. Lord, that as we gather into your presence today, that you would take our attention off from other things that may be happening in the sanctuary or with people around us. Forgive us, Lord, when we are unfocused and help us, Lord, today to worship you, to set our hearts on you. Knowing that we stand in your presence and that you see us today. Whether it be good behavior or bad, Lord, you see it all. And so as we come before you this morning, we confess we are not always the people that you have called us or created us to be. And so as we come into your presence today, Lord, we say we are sorry. Lord, we need you. We need forgiveness. We need your grace. We need your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Cleanse us. Make us right. Focus our hearts and our minds on you. Let us worship you and love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength this very day. And may we love one another as Jesus has loved us. Thank you, God, for the hope that we have, even in this broken world, Lord, that you, you live, and that you can live in us as well. Thank you, God, for being our living hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to you, Spirit of Grace, for leading us so well today. Grace. We welcome anyone who may be listening, watching online to YouTube, Facebook, or podcasts on any number of channels. We thank you for joining us today, and uh, you are part of our extended family, and we pray that you too will be blessed through our service this very morning. Today we get to continue our series from the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, When Kingdoms Collide is our sermon series, and today we get to resume that with Mark chapter 8, picking it up in verse 22 through 26. The healing of a blind man from Bethsaida. Hear the word of God. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, don't go into the village. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord remains forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Oh God, come. Speak to us now. Help us to hear what your Spirit is saying to the church, to Grace Church, to each one of us. Anoint this message. Anoint the messenger and anoint us all as we listen and focus our minds, opening our hearts and our eyes and our ears to you. May we see today, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Your people loved by God, probably everybody here today has had a first touch. Probably those of us who are gathered here, probably most of us believe in Jesus Christ. God has, has touched you and has claimed you as his child. You had a first touch of his grace, of salvation. Do you ever long for a second touch. Lord, I've been dealing with this pain for years. It's frustrating, it's aggravating every day. Every day when I get up, Lord, I feel it and it's there and it hurts. God, I've tried medications, I've tried therapy, I've seen a chiropractor, I've tried injections, I've had surgery, I'm thinking about another one. But Lord, you are the great physician, you are the great healer. Lord, I don't need any of that stuff if you would just touch me. Heal me. You're the great physician. Lord, you can do it. I believe in you. Your power is supreme. It would take an instant, Lord. Less than a second, you could heal me. Touch me, Lord, and heal me, I pray.
I've been a Christian for many, many years. I came to faith as a young person. I was baptized. I made profession of faith before the church. I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. I know I am. God has spoken to my heart. He has called me. I am his child. And I try my best to walk with him. I read my Bible. I pray every day. I go to church on Sundays. I, I listen to Pastor Dave's sermons. I'm trying to be a good person. I'm trying to walk the walk. And yet I feel so distant from God. Lord, I feel like you're a million miles away. I feel like my prayers never get any higher than the ceiling. God, where are you? Oh, Lord, revive me. I guess I'm going through a spiritual desert. I'm dry. I'm thirsty. My life feels dull and boring. I'm going through the motions even of my faith lately. But I don't want to go through the motions anymore. Lord, I need you to touch me. Revive me. Revive my heart and my soul. Let it be. Let me be true to you. victim to temptation still another time. The last time I said this would be it, no more, and yet I keep falling prey, I keep falling victim to it. It's an addiction, Lord, I'm afraid I can't help it. I want to break this habit, I want to break it so badly. You call us, you call me to be pure and holy. And yet, Lord, I keep stumbling into sin over and over again. Almost willfully, I choose this. I just figure, oh, a little bit can't hurt. I just need a little relief, just something to kind of ease the tension and break the anxiety of my life. I mean, I'm under stress lately. God, come on. But Lord, I know that it's a habit that is not holy and pleasing unto you. Oh, I try to rationalize. Oh, I'm not really hurting anybody. But I'm hurting me. And our relationship, God, I know that. Lord, deliver me, please. Save me from myself. Save me from this addiction. Touch me. I can't do it alone. I need your grace. I need your strength. I need your power. I need deliverance from you, God, and only you can save me now. Touch me, Lord. Heal my soul. Heal my brain. Heal my body. I have to confess, I, I don't really get this Christianity stuff, <laughs> this faith stuff. You know, I mean, I, 
salvation through Jesus, by grace, through faith. I mean, come on, we, we get what we deserve in life. I mean, if you don't earn it, you, you're not going to get salvation. You've got to work for it. You've got you've to be a good person. You've got to toe the line, man. And none of this salvation by grace stuff. I mean, Lord, what are you? What's the Bible? Ephesians two eight nine. It is by grace you are saved through faith, not by works. Now, come on, you've got to work at it. You better earn your salvation if you think you're going to end up in heaven someday. Salvation by grace, a free gift from God. It's not fair, Lord. How can those who turn to you late in life be saved? How can those who've lived a bad life and done bad things, how can they be saved? I'm a good person. Don't I deserve to go to heaven? It is a gift. A gift. Lord, I don't understand. I guess I don't know about this faith stuff. It seems almost too good to be true. A, a gift from God, salvation, new life. Lord, you gotta help me understand. Lord, touch me. Open my eyes that I can see. Because right now, I just don't get it. If you have ever longed for more healing, for revival and renewal in your life or in our church, if you have ever prayed to get free from an addiction or you just need more insight and understanding through the Spirit of God, boy, do I have some good news for you today. Our God is a God of second touches. Jesus and his disciples enter the town of Bethsaida some people bring to Jesus a blind man and beg Jesus to heal him. Jesus takes the blind man by the hand and leads him out of town. Just a moment, a private moment with Jesus. He spits on the man's eyes. Puts his hands on his eyes. Do you see anything, Jesus asks the man. I see people. They look like trees walking around. No doubt this man had bumped into a few trees in his life. Again, Jesus puts his hands on the man's eyes. He, he touches him a second time. Say it with me. A second time. Verse 25 says then that the man's eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he sees everything clearly. can see clearly now the rain. Jesus says, go home. Don't go into the village. Don't go back into town. Not yet, not now. I don't want everybody uh, to talk about this. Not yet. And the man is healed by a second touch. What's going on here? Is Jesus losing his power to heal? God, he was almighty. He can't even heal a blind man now with one touch. It takes two. Maybe that's why Matthew and Luke leave this story out of their Gospels entirely. It maybe makes Jesus seem a little weak, you know? He's losing the power, not what it used to be. You know, kind of like an old quarterback who doesn't have the same throwing arm. And Jesus, you're kind of washed up now. Or could it be 
that Jesus' healing in stages, incrementally, little by little, is exactly Mark's point. Maybe the story isn't just about physical healing or eyesight. It certainly is about that. But could it be that Jesus is teaching us about more than simply having 20-20 vision with your eyes? Maybe it has something to do with our spiritual vision as well. Let me ask you a question. Are you a patient person? Or do you pray for patience? Lord, I need patience. I need it right now. We're so spoiled by instant gratification in our culture today, in our world, that instant cash, instant coffee, instant potatoes. Fast food, fast checking, fast computers, faster cars, fast cell phones, faster Wi-Fi, on-demand streaming services, Hulu, Roku, Vudu, who knew? I don't like to wait on the phone with customer service. I don't like to wait for my dinner very long at a restaurant. I don't want to wait at a stoplight for more than 20 seconds. Western society is always in a hurry. I feel the need of speed. But what if, through today's passage, God is teaching us patience. Aaron Rodgers said it once, right? R-E-L-A-X. Relax. God isn't finished with you yet. Slow down. Take your time. Smell the roses. Wait on me, says the Lord. Isaiah 40, verse 31 tells us that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Psalm 27 says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. But I don't want to wait. I want it now. No. No, wait. God is never in a hurry, have you noticed? Much to our chagrin. Lamentations 3, 25 says, The Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him. In the one who seeks Him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. There's a promise of healing. Yes, I will heal you. I will help you, says the Lord. But my help and my healing, it may not come all at once. It may not come instantaneously. It may not come as you want it to or in your time. But it will come. And often it will come in stages incrementally over time. Your job is to stay in faith. I gave you a first touch. I got things started. You're well on your way, but you need a second touch. So stay in hope. Keep the faith. Be patient, for I am a God of second touches. And maybe today, as you have gathered here, you are in need of a second touch. I know I am. 
And there are two primary areas in which we all need a second touch. First off, the most obvious one here is physically. Anybody here have some aches and pains today? Did you go to bed alone and wake up with arthritis? <laughs> Anybody uh, dealing with some stomach issues? Some depression? Some chronic concerns or pain? But most all of us do, whether it be a gallbladder, kidney stones, an irregular heartbeat, recovering from a surgery, arthritis, or the big C. We all have some health issues. Maybe it's just a stub toe, a bruise on your arm, acne, fading eyesight. Healing will come, often in stages. We all prefer to have a one-and-done miracle. Touch me, Jesus. Make me whole today. I want my miracle now. Today is your day. Release your supernatural power in me and let me be healed. But more often than not, Jesus heals gradually. Usually it's better that way, you know. Teaches us patience. Teaches us perseverance. Teaches us persistence. Teaches us how to pray faithfully. Teaches you not to give up. No quick fixes. Builds character. The kind of character we find in Jesus. Most of you know that I've dealt with back pain for many years of my life, even some decades, really. Um, and uh, I prayed over and over, and I've tried many things, including surgery many years ago, and injections and so forth. And some days I feel like it's getting worse. And, Lately, I started a new therapy program. It's an app-based program. and get up at 6 o'clock most every morning, Monday through Friday, and do my hinge health exercises. You know, I think it might be helping. <laughs> I think I'm experiencing some of the healing that I've been praying for for years. Not a big change, but it seems like maybe just a shade or two better. I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to keep praying. Keep exercising. Keep stretching. Many of you also have health issues. You put up with it for a long time. And by golly, it may be getting worse some days, or it might even be getting a little better. Praise God. It may not be a dramatic change, but maybe it's just a few shades better, and you're like, okay, I can do this. No, not every disease or illness or health issue is going to be healed or resolved in this life, even as we pray that it may be so. But we praise God for an ultimate healing that is coming at the end of time. Remember the psalmist in Psalm 103 wrote, Praise the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of my sins and heals all my diseases. That word all in the original Hebrew, it's an interesting word with several nuances, but actually it means all. One day will be healed. God gives John a revelation. He writes it down in Revelation 21. God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Jesus says, behold, I am making all things new. I don't know about you, but I like new things. 
Jesus is in the business of giving second touches in the area of our physical being and healing. Praise God. The second area in which all of us need a second touch, no doubt, is not just physically, but spiritually. We talked about spiritual blindness two weeks ago. In order to understand this passage correctly, we've got to remember the context of it. The passage just before this one reveals the denseness and dullness of the Pharisees and even Jesus' own disciples. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees, Jesus warns. Do you still not understand, Jesus asked his disciples? No matter how much Jesus taught, how many miracles he performed, how many sermons he preached, people just didn't get it. They were slow to catch on, though. But the fact is, this is us. We, too, are not that different than the Pharisees, than the disciples of Jesus who can be dull at times. Our eyes seem to be spiritually blind. But thankfully, Jesus gives second touches spiritually as well. You may not understand it all yet. You may not have the spiritual insights that you should have by now and you thought you'd be further along in your life at this age. You may not be able to make sense of Jesus or your faith journey today. You may be dealing with grief that you don't understand. There may be some depression going on, swirling around in your mind. There may be relationships with your peers, friends, family members, kids at school, kids in the youth group. And they're not right. And we don't understand why we go through hard times and hard things. But one day we will. One day we will understand, and you will understand perfectly as the Lord reveals it to you. Here's what the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully. Praise God, Jesus opens the eyes of the spiritually blind as well. He isn't finished with you yet. So be patient and be faithful and keep believing, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Stay close to God and hang in here. Because Jesus gives second touches. Amen. As we'll see moving forward, today's passage, right smack in the middle of the Gospel of Mark, is a bridge, a transitional passage between what we have already seen and know about Jesus and what is yet to come. So far, we've seen, in, we've seen Jesus in Mark's Gospel as a man of action. He's cast out demons, healed the sick, defines family for us. He taught us about seeds and sowing in the kingdom of God. He's walked on water, calmed the sea, raised the paralytic. He's multiplied the loaves, fed the masses, confronted the Pharisees, broke Sabbath laws and time-honored Jewish traditions. Up to this point in Mark, Jesus has shown us many things. He has proven his power as the Son of God over and over again. So far, our study in Mark is a great introduction to the life of Jesus. We've gotten a first look at Jesus. You understand some things now. But things are still a little bit blurry. You don't quite yet have a clear picture. Things may look like trees. But now, following today, your eyes are about to be opened even more. <clears throat> We're 
we're going to get another glimpse and view of Jesus moving forward. One which you may or may not like. We're about to enter another phase in Jesus' ministry, the second half. We're going to see deeper into the life of Jesus and deeper into what it means to follow him. And as we'll see later in this same chapter, chapter 8, Jesus is about to open our eyes and to reveal the way of self-sacrifice and suffering and the cross to his disciples. Jesus will teach us how to see God, ourselves, others, the world, and reality itself in a whole new way. What we thought was impossible suddenly becomes possible with Jesus. What we have seen and learned and heard of Jesus so far is insufficient, incomplete, unsatisfactory. There is so much more that has yet to be learned. As Paul Harvey would say, you know what the news is. In a moment, you're going to hear... Exactly. Are you ready to have your eyes opened? Are you ready to go deeper with Jesus? Are you ready to receive more spiritual insight and revelation? Are you ready to be healed? Are you ready for a second touch? Spiritually and physically. Truth is, we all need to have our eyes open even more. You've got a good start. You are well on your way. Praise God. You've had an encounter with Jesus in your life. That's great. But there's more. More to see, more to grasp, more to understand, more insight, more revelation, more to life than what you know and see now. Thank you, Jesus, for you are a God who gives second touches. God ain't finished with you yet. Lord, we come before you today in need of second touches. We stand before you as broken people. People who need healing physically. Who need healing spiritually. People who need you. And we need to have our eyes open, Lord. So would you come? As we wait upon you, Lord, as you teach us patience and persistence, perseverance and prayer, would you help us to keep the faith? And would you come and grace us with your presence, your touch, your mercy again? We need a boost. We need a second dose of your grace and healing. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see, that we may see Jesus and see him clearly. In your holy name we pray it, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Join us in singing.
Thank you, Spirit of Grace. We want to welcome everybody who's visiting today. What a great joy to have visitors with us. We are all about visitors. We love to welcome guests here at Grace Church. We've got family and friends with us today. Welcome to all of you. What a great joy to have you here. Please uh, join us again next week if you can. Many announcements in the bulletin. We take time to write and print these announcements every week. I trust that you're reading them, at, not during the sermon, of course. But uh, at another time, we're taking them home and uh, reading them over carefully so that you are informed and up to speed on all of the things, the many things that are happening here at Grace Church. We want you to be informed. So please do take that bulletin home and read it over carefully. Mark your calendar for the events coming up. Uh, this Wednesday, our Rock Youth Group will be traveling to Westminster Presbyterian Church for a Feed My Starving Children mobile pack. We are going to help pack food for people who are hungry all around the world. It's a great event, a great organization. We're going to join with other kids, other youth groups. And so be praying for us. Young people will meet here at 4 p.m. this coming Wednesday. We will return and dismiss at the usual 7 p.m. We are also hoping to carry on with our team building retreat at The Rock. This will be at Camp Courageous in Monticello, October 21 and 22, I think it is. It's overnight, Friday overnight, and most of the day, Saturday, I'll be back on Sunday, Lord willing, if I'm in shape enough to preach and lead, but to, after spending a you know, weekend with the kids, you never know. But, uh, but uh, please, please be praying for our team building retreat, which is coming up, information about that in the bulletin. And then, uh, the, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday is our annual Trunk or Treat, for the fishnet children and all of you have an opportunity to participate and help bless the children and make this a special a fun event just one of our fun times with the kids they get to costume and all of that you can too sign up at the information station today put your vehicle in have some candy ready to hand out if you want you can decorate your trunk whatever you like to do but that's coming up october 26 i believe it is we also have at the information station today a sign-up for a Christmas drama. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's been a couple of years since we've been able to do this with COVID and everything else going on. So we're going to try to do this. We need actors, and I know some of you are quite the characters. So please sign up today at the information station for the part of your choice. Speaking, not speaking parts. Rehearsals will be Sunday afternoons. Uh, the time, the actual dates of the performance will be scheduled according to your schedule. So uh, please sign up today. We need actors. We need people to participate in this great Christmas drama. Let's make a strong outreach statement to our community uh, this this Christmas season. The Women of Joy Bible Study will meet on Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Youth House as We're well. Oh, I'm sorry, 1 p.m., excuse me. I don't know what I was thinking. 1 p.m. at the Youth House on Saturday afternoon. All women invited. Many announcements in the bulletin. Please read them. You might also check out the sign-ups at the information station, sign-ups for greeters and nursery helpers, and to provide refreshments between the services and uh, lots of good things to participate in, lots of ways to serve. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Oh God, as we come before you today, we thank you that you are indeed a God of second touches, of second chances, of 20th chances, of 200th chances. For Lord, you never give up on us. You never give up on us. We're so thankful and grateful and humbled that you, that you keep pursuing us all the days of our lives. Lord, that we may dwell with you in your house, that you want us to be with you so much that you would rather die and send Jesus, your son, to die than to live without us. So God, thank you for the second touches of life that are given through Jesus and His Spirit. There are many in this congregation who need a second touch, a dose of healing of your grace and mercy. Jean Graham, Steve Smith, Daryl, Christy, Debbie, Judy, Pam, all of our shut-ins, widows and widowers, people who find themselves alone and maybe lonely. 
Lord, truth is we all need a second touch from you. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see, that we may see Jesus and see him clearly. Lord, thank you for the many ministries that we carry out here as a church family. Fishnet for children, The Rock for youth, small groups for adults, a women's Bible study, men's ministries, for our Helping Hands ministry and our Prayer Shawl ministry, for our Blessing Fund and Benevolent Fund in so many, many ways, even through worship on Sunday mornings, through the preaching of your word and the lifting of praises to you. Thank you for these opportunities afforded to us here in this community known to us affectionately as Grace Church, where ordinary people experience your extraordinary grace. May that be our vision, the mission that propels us forward in ministry. May your love and your grace, your peace and joy, the unity of your spirit, may it be abundantly present here. May our witness and outreach go forth, making a strong statement with our lives and in this community. Cause us to grow in every way that matters to you. We pray for churches throughout the Cedar Valley and beyond. As we stand for Jesus Christ in this world and in our culture, in our community, may Jesus' name be praised. May people be pointed to him. May we fall on our knees today before the sun sets, before our head hits the pillow. Praying, Lord, for your presence to be more and more in our lives. Bring repentance, renewal, and revival to this nation that has lost its way. Be with the hungry and the homeless and the war-torn here and around the world. Lord, may we, believers in Jesus Christ, the Church of Jesus, Grace Reformed Church, may we shine a light in the darkness and dismay of our culture. For above anyone else, we have reason for hope. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Remind us today even as we all stand in need of second touches, that we are overcomers through the power and presence of Jesus. Come. We pray it in your name. Amen. Amen. Join us for a closing song, Overcomer. Please stand.
Love that song. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for carving out some of your precious time to do what we're called and put on this earth to do, to praise our great God and to come together as believers to do so. Isaiah says this in chapter 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.